Hello there everyone, uh, welcome back to another video uh, talking about feeder technology. Today I wanted to talk about uh, some of the things that I did in high school that I feel really helped me out going forward. So this video is mostly going to be for high school students or people that are just starting to get into the feeder technology and design technology area of live entertainment. Also, this video is gonna be kind of specifically for people doing sort of scenic design and scenic construction. So the first tip I have for uh, people trying to get into this kind of stuff is to you know get involved with the theater in your area. I sort of got started with my high school theater. We had a small section of one of our performing arts classes that was focused on building sets. So design and building and I really took to it, I really enjoyed it, and that's kind of what got me started. So the first thing you wanna do is find somewhere where you can start to learn this stuff. This might be a class that your high school offers, or it could be reaching out to other local theaters, community theaters, high school theaters, places like these um, are always looking for volunteers and people that are interested in learning more about this and getting more into it. Um, so reaching out to them and asking to get involved is a great first step. It can be as simple as writing an email to the person in charge of the, you know, the organization saying, hey, you know, I'm really interested in getting involved in this aspect. Uh, what are some of the ways that I can get involved with your organization? A lot of the time they will put you in contact with either the head of their shop or the person that's in charge of doing the technical aspects and you can start talking with them and working out ways that you can start to come in and start doing this kind of work. Another great thing to look for is internships. I know my community theater offered internships in all sorts of different areas and I was actually able to do it through my high school so I got a class credit for it and I would leave school and go to my internship and work in a scene shop. Uh, any other ways that you can look to get involved too, uh, a great way is to reach out to the stage managers at your theater and ask to be on the run crew for shows. This gets you great backstage experience and really teaches you how a show works while it's running and teaches you a lot about scenery as well. Another good thing to ask about is helping with load-ins and strikes. This is putting the set into the space and building it or taking the set down and moving it out. These are a big part of our job in technical theater and any ways you can just go and build sets be where the sets are being built in my experience there's never enough people that want to help out with this so if you express genuine interest in it they're gonna be more than happy to help you out and give you some instruction teach you about this stuff now once you start to get involved a really great first step that I found was to ask to head one scenery element I mentioned this in a previous video but my first scenery element I ever put together was the grandmother's tree Tree from Into the Woods. Now, when I asked about this, this tree was already being planned, it was already part of the set, and they basically gave me what it was supposed to look like and gave me some instruction and said, this is what we wanted to do, here's how we want it to work, can you build this for us? And it's a really good idea when you're doing this first kind of set that you have instruction or you have someone watching over you, making sure you're not screwing it up or giving you advice on how to make it better. And your first set is not always going to be great. As you can see here, the tree doesn't look fantastic. I did my best, but I was 16, and that's totally okay. Your sets are not gonna be amazing right off the bat. All you can do is give it your best effort and learn as much as you can from the process. So another thing that was super helpful to me when I was first getting started was learning about the process of how a show gets put on, how a set is created. And there's a few main parts of how a set gets put together. The first part being the idea. What do you want it to look like? Now this process usually starts with the director of the show, the person with the vision for how the show is going to look, talking to the scenic designer or whoever is designing about what they want it to look like. So say you're gonna put on a production of Sweeney Todd, but they wanna do Sweeney Todd in a steampunk style. This style is going to inform your decision about how you design the set or how the set is designed. Because within the style of steampunk, there are certain elements and certain things that make it look steampunk that should be included in the set if you want that image to come across. Now, in some situations, the director isn't really all that dead set on one idea and they are open to sort of whatever you wanna come up with. And those are really fun, but can also be a little bit challenging if you don't really have any good sense of direction. So before you start designing anything, it's always best 
to sit down and talk with your director. Now in professional theater, the design of a set is a highly collaborative process with a number of people. The director is very involved and it is a progression that you work through and there's cost outs and all sorts of different things. But typically at a high school and community theater level, you have a few conversations, talk about it, and then you come up with a design, they like it, and you can start to implement that design. Another good first step when looking at designing a show is to read the script. Look at what it says, look at what the characters are doing, what are their actions. If there's a character that needs to bust through a door and slam it behind them, your set has to have a door in it that can slam. Or if a character needs to go upstairs, your set has to have stairs in it. Or if your set takes place in the early 1800s, you probably need to do some research into what buildings looked like in the 1800s. Where is the show taking place? That's also a great place to start. Look at the architecture and the styles in that time period in that place. And once you've got a good idea of what things look like, you can start to implement some of those elements into your design. So when you look at the set, it looks like it is from that time period. And one of the most important parts of the design is to not think about how you're gonna implement it too much. If you're thinking like, oh, I wanna put this flat here and this platform here, it's sort of limiting in your design. What you wanna do is look at a big picture. Okay, where do I want walls? Where do I want steps? Where do I want a change in elevation? And then later on, you can look at how you can actually do that. And that might change the design a little bit going forward, but in the end, it'll normally give you a better product if you're not thinking as much about how you're going to build it while you're designing it. This also leads me to another great thing that I learned in high school, which is scale drawing. If you've never drawn in scale before, it's essentially taking the real world and reducing it to a smaller size that represents the same amount of space. So a typical scale would be a half inch scale. So that means that in a piece of paper, one foot is equal to one half of an inch on the paper. So that means when you draw say a four by eight flat on this piece of paper, it is gonna be two inches wide by four inches long. And there's a really great tool that I would really suggest getting is called an architect scale or an architect's rule. Uh, you can get them at Walmart, art supply stores, anything like that. Uh, they look like this, they're kind of weird looking, but if you can look up a video and learn how to use it, they are super, super helpful when you're trying to draw out a set how you want it to look. And this just makes sure that whatever you draw in scale will actually work in real life and you can look at what it's going to look like when it's full size. Another thing that I learned in high school that was super helpful was AutoCAD. AutoCAD or Automatic Computer Aided Drafting is a super powerful program that essentially lets you draw in scale on a computer. So on your computer, you're able to draw things in real size on the computer and then be able to shrink them down into a set scale and you know print them out, have them on a piece of paper. Now, unfortunately, AutoCAD is an expensive program. Uh, another program that's really good is Inventor, also paid, but my recommendation for a free program is one called SketchUp. SketchUp is free and it is also hosted completely online. And a lot of the time for more simplistic sets, SketchUp is more than enough to get a really good idea of what the set's gonna look like if you wanna do it on a computer. And if you're looking at pursuing a theater technology path for your future, knowing CAD or Inventor or SketchUp or some kind of drafting or 3D modeling program is really, really helpful. Most shops that I know of either use AutoCAD or Inventor. I've seen a little bit of Vectorworks. One that I got started with was called Fusion 360. That's really more for uh, 3D printing and things like that, but it's still a 3D modeling software and it can be super helpful when you're trying to visualize a 3D set piece. And that is the next step in your process. After you've come up with a design, you know what you want it to look like. Then you have to take it from, okay, this is what I want it to look like how do I build something that looks like that? And in most cases, it can be accomplished with some flats or walls, some platforms on legs or stair units, but sometimes you've got to get a little bit more creative. A really great example of this uh, creative problem solving that you have to do is uh, this unit right here. This is a uh, Horton's tree from Susicol that I designed. Now I knew I wanted it to look like a really colorful nest setting on a tree. So I had to come up with a way to implement that so that someone could actually sit on top of it and that the nest would look like a nest. 
So the solution that I came up with was making a raised platform and putting cutouts on the front and back that looked like a tree. I then made the ribs that made the general outline of what the nest was gonna look like and I wrapped it in colorful pool noodles that I got from Dollar Tree. When I designed it, I didn't really know how I was going to implement these things, but as I started to look and think about how it needed to be used and how I wanted it to look, the solution became pretty clear. So using these elements of creative problem solving to decide how you wanna build your set is a really important skill. It's really great to work on. Another thing that scale drawings in 3D models can really help with is estimating the cost. In almost every situation, your theater is gonna be crunched for money and you've only got so much to work with when you're doing a set. So if you're able to draw what your set is gonna look like, figure out how you're gonna build it, you can count you know, how many boards you're gonna need, how many sheets of plywood are you gonna need, how much paint are you gonna need, because you need to know that kind of stuff. You have to be able to tell the person managing the money how much it's gonna cost. And sometimes you might get to a point where what you designed is just too expensive to realistically be done. And sometimes you're gonna have to redesign it or cut that element out of the show. And unfortunately, that's just part of the process of putting a show together. Another thing that was really helpful when I was in high school was taking shop type classes. A lot of the times a high school will offer a CAD class or a drafting class. Even some type of architecture class can be really, really helpful. Also classes like wood shop, metal shop. Those are super, super helpful when you're learning how to implement these kind of techniques. Now it wasn't super helpful for me, but my high school offered an electrical wiring class that I took and I don't use it all the time, but there have been a few times where it's really come in handy. And my final tip is to really learn as much as you can from all sorts of different sources. Some of the best ways to learn things are in person working with someone, but there are tons and tons of YouTube videos, websites, and tutorials all over the internet that talk about how to build scenery and how to come up with creative solutions to these problems. There are also quite a few books that have been written talking about how to implement theater technology. A few of my favorites are this one here, which is the Illustrated Theater Production Guide. This book covers a ton of great stuff from scale drafting, different types of paint, ways to build scenery, and ways to implement it in the best way possible. And many of you will probably be familiar with this book, which is the Backstage Handbook. This one gives a similar overview of all sorts of things that go into making a theater set. From different types of chair legs to the right slope on stairs, it really covers a ton of great stuff. And if you don't have one of these, seriously pick one of these up. And if you're really interested in this stuff, make sure you're going to shows. Go see plays, go see them all over the place. Wherever someone's doing live theater, go see it and pay attention to the problems that they had to solve. I really hope you found this video helpful and learned some new ways that you can get involved and learn more about this profession while you're still in high school or just starting off. If you have any other questions or things you would like to know about doing technical theater, please leave a comment down below, ask me some questions. I'm always happy to answer them. Or if you have a topic that you would like me to talk about in a future video, maybe something you're interested in, leave a comment again and make sure you subscribe for more videos about doing theater technology. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you learned something. Stay safe out there.